We are halfway through season two of The Wheel of Time. We've seen the direction the story's heading. We've seen some great performances, some great adaptation choices, and some not so great adaptation choices. There's been a ton of discussion around the season to this point, so I figured now is a good time to ask ourselves, is season two any good? Now, before diving in, take a moment and like the video if you like this type of content. It helps my videos reach more people. And if you enjoy Wheel of Time content in general, not just TV show content, consider subscribing to the channel. I've got literally hundreds of Wheel of Time TV show and book videos on this channel. So feel free to look back on the channel and find videos to watch or use the YouTube search feature to find this stuff that you might be curious about. But let's talk about season two. My goal today is simple. We'll break down the good stuff. We'll break down the bad stuff from season two to to this point. We'll talk about some of the standouts, both good and bad, and then I'll rate the season up to this point. So in general, as I've said in my individual episode reviews, this season has been a vast improvement over season one from the perspective of it just being a good show and the production quality being better. I think that's been noticeable in the reactions to the show. Anecdotally, I'm seeing far better reactions in comments and online this season as opposed to the first season. In fact, the Rotten Tomatoes score has the show certified fresh. Reviews have been coming in better, and I've seen some that have written off the show after season one coming back to the show in season two. I can fully acknowledge the show has strayed even further away from the source material in terms of plot and even in some characterization. If a viewer was expecting the show to move closer to the book after some of the liberties they took in season one, then I can imagine season two has been a big disappointment on that end of things. In my opinion, I still think this feels like the Wheel of Time. Most of the characters feel true to who they are. Some of them have even been expanded for the better but in some ways I do wish we had a closer adaptation. I'm enjoying this season. I knew changes were coming and I expected them, but that doesn't mean I don't also wish that I got to see exactly what I read on the screen. That being said though, I am enjoying not completely knowing what's coming and how things are gonna be adapted. And I'm actually loving some of the changes, but not all of them. And frankly, this show isn't just for book fans anyway. It's bringing in a new audience and the response in my comments and from what I've seen online from non-book readers has been pretty positive. They've loved the season so far by and large. I think my actual biggest gripe with the show so far is that I don't believe Amazon has promoted it enough. There are still many people who are unaware that the show is out. The good news is, is that it's a streaming show and people can watch it anytime, but the buzz would be higher, I think, if they were giving it a better treatment. Thursday Night Football on Amazon on Prime kicks off this week, so I'd be curious if they advertise the show pretty heavily there. While they have that audience tuned in, it's a separate audience than they might normally have, and they've done that for some of their other shows. But let's talk first about the standouts to me in the first half of the season. I'll start with the standout performances. I've mentioned this a couple times, but Kate Fleetwood as Leandrin had better be nominated for an Emmy for Best Supporting Actress. She has been nothing but stellar this season. She was great last season, but in season two, her performance and the writing of her character has just gone to another level in my opinion. She's nuanced, she's humanized, she's bad, she's good, she's all of the above and I want more of it. Zoe Robbins as Nynaeve has also been a standout to me. She has essentially been the main character of the season so far in my opinion, with multiple episodes mostly devoted to her character development, which is fine by me because Nynaeve was, was and is my favorite character from the books. Zoe has really brought Nynaeve's emotions and motivations to life through not only her line delivery, but primarily through her facial expressions and body language. Nynaeve was always insecure, but also driven, and I feel like Zoe is portraying her insecurity and her drive to protect those that she cares about. I think that's coming through in her facial expressions. I think it's been great. So what about standout plot lines? Well, I, I think the most obvious plot line that has really shined for me, maybe obvious to all of you who've been watching my reviews, but that's Leandrin. And I'd say really the entire White Tower plot line has been great. I enjoy most of the time that we get to spend in the White Tower, but Leandrin and what's going on with her, that's really the standout for me in the season so far. I, I'm the most intrigued, most interested, and I'm always sucked into the scenes that she is in. I wasn't initially high on it, but the dynamic with Rand and Celine slash Lanfear has really started to come around uh, to me towards, especially towards the end of episode four. I think this was done more realistically than in the books, where Celine disappeared randomly and then would randomly reappear and have a weird flirty relationship with Rand. I think this was much more realistic. I think it was well done. I have a feeling 
feeling based on the events of episode four that Lanfear will have a nice little plot line in the next episode or next couple episodes uh, for the rest of the season. But before continuing with the video, let me take a quick second and mention one of the sponsors of the channel, audible.com. If you are new to the Wheel of Time or if you're wanting to touch up on the books so you can see what's changed, my favorite way to reread the books is via audiobook. The Wheel of Time audiobooks are amazing and you even have more choices now. The original audiobook versions are read by Kate Redding and Michael Kramer. They're amazing at what they do. They've become icons here in the Wheel of Time community. Um, they were even guests of honor at WatCon for the last two years, which is a Wheel of Time convention that I helped run. But also now, Rosamund Pike, Moraine herself, has read the first three books of the Wheel of Time series, and you can also get those on Audible. You can grab all of those books on audible.com, but if you are not sure about Audible, or if you're not sure if you would like audiobooks, I can get you a free audiobook. All you have to do is head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nabless and sign up for the free trial. You'll get a free book that you can keep regardless of whether you keep the service or not, and you support the channel in doing so. Audibletrial.com forward slash Nabless. Let's get back to the video. So what about the weaker standouts in the series so far? Well, I wouldn't say that there have been any poor performances in my opinion. I think the acting has been pretty good, but I do think there have been a number of fairly weak plot lines so far that I'm hoping get fleshed out further in the second half of the season. Before I mention them though, I think it's important to say that we've only seen half the season. Streaming television shows are season long arcs, so it's possible that we've only seen the setup for certain characters. So my opinions that I'm about to give could change by the time we've seen the rest of the season. But just like I thought season one was worse than the sum of its parts, I think it's possible that season two could be better than the sum of its parts. So with that said, I think the plot line that I have been the most disappointed in has been the land plot line. Land and Moraine, but specifically land. I spent a lot of time in my episode four review breaking this down, so I don't want to rehash it completely here, but the tension between Moraine and land feels forced to me. It feels unnecessary. And most importantly, it's just not that interesting to watch. I have been more into Moraine's plotline since she was separated from Lan, but Lan spending time with Alana and her warders was fairly dull. I think he's had the weakest arc of the season so far, in my opinion. I don't mind a departure from Book Lan, but I think that what he has been adapted into so far here in season two has just not been that enjoyable for me to watch. I don't especially think that the Matt or Perrin plotlines are bad per se. They're just lacking. This is where I'm actually more upset at spending time with Lan and the warders and Alana, I, I would rather have seen more development of Matt, as I think Donald Finn has been great in what we've been able to see from him. We just haven't gotten a lot of them. I, I'd also love to spend more time with Perrin and watch him become the leader and badass fighter that we know he's going to become. I don't think either of those plot lines have had time to breathe, and I'd love to see more of them in the second half of the season. And I think it's very possible that both of those plot lines will expand greatly in the next four episodes. I'm certainly hoping that happens. We have yet to see quite a few things that we know are coming from the trailers that will be in the show. So again, I am likely to change my judgment of things once the entire season is out. Now that could go positively or negatively, but so far this year, I gave episode one a seven out of 10. I gave episode two a seven and a half out of 10. I gave episode three a seven and I gave episode four a six out of 10. So how does the first half of the season come together and how would I rate it as a whole? Well, I think the strengths have outweighed the weaknesses and I have a feeling that we're going to see the an expansion of some of the plot lines that I think are fairly weak in the show so far. I think my rating for the first half of season two is a pretty respectable seven out of 10. I'm actually hoping that that will improve as the season goes on and some of the plot lines get even more fleshed out. Like with season one, the back half of season one actually sort of killed season one for me. So I'm hoping that does not happen. What do you think of the first half of season two so far? Is it any good? Let me know in the comments of the video what you think. And again, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time content. Huge thank you to my patrons. If you want to support the channel, check out the link to my Patreon in the description of the video. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video, you might like one of these videos here as well. Thank you for watching and until next time, peace out.